This is my 28 Roadster. I built it um, just about all from hand. It's a fiberglass body. It's got a 1951 Ford Flathead V8 five-speed uh, transmission. It's um, it's kind of a labor of love. I always wanted a Roadster, and so this is my this is my product, I guess. Uh, it's kind of like a little go-kart running through the hills. It's a lot of fun and not real fast. Probably only has 120, 125 horsepower at best. But, uh, but it's a good ride, a lot of fun. Another wonderful day in the Black Hills, a nice, cool Sunday morning. Uh, got some things to sell. We got a lot of people locally selling used car parts and motorcycle parts. I've got my small collection of stuff I don't need anymore that I hope to make someone else part of their life. Um, comes around every year and about the same time every year. and. It's a good time to see old friends and uh, visit with people and buy someone else's stuff after you've sold some of yours. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's just a, it's a good time to socialize and, and be a part of uh, this community that uh, we all love, which is uh, cool cars and motorcycles. And you can find just about anything you want, anything from household stuff to car parts, but uh, the car parts are the coolest parts. About trade anybody out of anything and get a pretty good deal if you're... Uh, you're willing to work with each other. It's a good time, cars are cool. Hi, I'm Don Kiger. This is my 1967 Chevelle SS 396. It's got a turbo hydromatic 400. I acquired the car back in the end of January since then, I've completely rebuilt the motor, absolutely everything. Um, the car was originally from Puerto Rico, and it was uh, transported here about eight years ago, and it's been in storage. And when I acquired it, um, it hadn't really been ran or hadn't been maintenanced or anything. So there was a lot of little things that was wrong with the car that I needed to fix. and air conditioning, all that stuff. But the car was an original power steering, power windows, power brakes, and air conditioned car originally. So it's, it's pretty unique finding one that was in this good of condition. My name is Dave Hintz. I'm the president of the Council of the Cobblestone Car Club. Um, our club through the year, uh, during the summer we have cruises on certain nights. During the winter we try to do garage tours. Um, also a big event for us is our car show that we hold in February. Um, it's a main money maker for the club, but it's also a good way. We give a lot of money back to charitable organizations here in Rapid City and in parts of western South Dakota. My car is a 68 Chevelle. SS 396. Um, it's an all original car, original interior, original motor, original frame, original rear end, four speed. I have owned it now for approximately three years. I've always been a Chevelle fan. My first car was a Chevelle, a 1973 Chevelle Laguna. And then when, uh, when my girls finally got out of high school and into college, not on their own, I just let my wife know that I think it was time for me to have a toy. My name is Mickey Gregory. This is a 1965 GTO that I bought brand new in 1965. And I've had it all this time and uh, this is not the original paint job. I've had it uh, torn down and rebuilt from the ground up about two years ago. Uh, paint job, motor job, uh, everything you can think of. New clutch, 
new gas tank, new radiator. Uh, rebuilt it one piece at a time almost, but not quite. Uh, but it, uh, like I said, it was stripped down to the frame and uh, rebuilt. And uh, my wife and I had it when we got married. And then we've been married for 51 years. So. Uh, it's got over 200,000 miles on it. That's the reason I had it uh, rebuilt completely. And uh, we've enjoyed it for the last year that we've had it since it was rebuilt. Let's talk about these taillights. What do you think they would go on? A Ford? Well, they, they're going to go on my my. They're going to go on my lawn garden tractor trailer that I, that I ripped one <laughs> off rip the other one day. Off. Well, they got a matching pair here. Ten bucks work, huh? <laughs> See that? Even sell them to you if you're going to put them on your Ford. No, well, it, no, it's a it's a land yacht garden tractor trailer. Well, that's probably a drill. There you go. Sale of the day. You know, it was really a good taillight, too, because I was moving it, and this branch caught the light and just ripped it right off the trailer. A branch. I mean, I could see it if it was a 400-pound guy, but a branch? It must have been a big branch that you drove under. No, heck no, it wasn't any bigger than... I'm going to check that, that they didn't sure, manufacture Make sure that's right. I'm just kind of... <laughs> I had Jeep Wrangler. That was the taillight. Oh, I'm sure, uh, yeah. That's how they came, too. <laughs> See that? But yeah, if you backed into anything, they were just pieces. Just yeah. Shattered. Is that enough? Did I give you enough? Uh, yeah, it looks good. Well, the SWAT meet's coming up September 13th, and it's a fun time. It's really fun. It's, Tell it's, us where it's, it is. It's big. It's at the fairgrounds. Uh, it's September 13th. It's our 37th or 38th year. It utilizes pretty much all the parking lot at the fairgrounds. And it's a great time, but it's all car stuff. And we get people from all over, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, people from out of the country. We had some guys from Scandinavia last year that, that made part of their itinerary of their vacation to come buy our swap meet. Did so they buy any? Oh, they did, but that's the swap meet. That's what, that makes, it, that's what makes it fun. Patty Blundell. Um, my car is a 1968 Cougar. It was the early 68. It was the October model. And I was a lucky high school junior when I got the car. Um, I lived in town with my great aunt because my family lived too far from town. And so I stayed with her and she didn't drive. And decided that she wanted to have a car so that I could take her to Pomida and the grocery store and all the places she wanted to go. And so um, it was my car from the beginning. And uh, my name is on the original title with my parents and I've had it over 50 years, obviously. And so it's been fun. It needs a paint job but it's been a wonderful car. It took me student teaching. Um, it took me through 10 years of just everyday driving until I got another car and um, wouldn't trade it for anything. John Stafker. I've been in the club for over 25 years. Uh, I drive a 37 Chevy right now that probably had it, I don't know, in storage for quite a while. And then about three years ago, finally decided to finish it up. And now it's been on the road for a couple of years. I have a couple other cars that I drive to, a 57 Chevy and a 34 Chevy. So I can switch around and have different rides and stuff like that. But I've been doing this ever since 1976, I guess. That's when I built my first car, so this is kind of old stuff to me, you know. It's got all the things you'd want, power steering, brakes, air conditioning, V8, automatic, overdrive, cruise and that, you know. So it, it's comfortable on the road. 
as far as going long distance and stuff like that. So it's, like I say, they're, they're around to be had, but to find one that's in good shape where this one was in good shape when I, when I bought the car, the body and stuff like that. So that makes a difference. <laughs> Yeah, my name is Rodney Kruger. I drive a 91 Corvette convertible. I bought it about a year ago up to Spearfish uh, Chevrolet. Oh, I don't know how fast it goes. I, <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not that gutsy anymore. Uh, but uh, it's just got a 350 automatic transmission. It's not nothing real super fast. It's just plain Jane Corvette. Yeah. I love it because of the convertible and the color of it. Hey, I'm Robert Myers, Hounds Car Club, and uh, tonight we're going on a cruise. We cruise once a month during the warm weather, and uh, there'll probably be 25 to 30 cars here, classics and modern cars, hot rods, that kind of thing. This car of mine is a 65 Chevelle. It's uh, really quite rare. It's a two-door station wagon, and they only made 1,652 of them in 65, which is really low production, being that they made 450,000 65 Chevelles. I've had it, uh, oh, I don't know, seven years now, and it's modernized, it's four-wheel disc brakes, it's got a modern Corvette-style engine and overdrive transmission. And uh, the variety of cars in the club is, is really surprising. I mean, we've got cars dating back probably to 1923 up to, you know, brand new cars. Um, you'll see some here tonight. There's new Challengers, there's a couple new Corvettes in the club. There's uh, 32 Fords, 29 Fords. We've also got a 37 Ford truck hot rod. I've been in this hobby probably since I was 14 years old. Not officially in a club like this, but I've been messing with cars with my older brother since that. And uh, I don't even want to tell you how many years that is, but it's been a few years. And what happens is once this hot riding and car stuff gets in your blood, you can't get it out. I mean, you try, but you can't. Most of the guys in here probably average own three to four cars each. Some have one. I've got a couple guys in the club own over 20 cars. Not all licensed, not all on the road. Sometimes they're uh, projects, sometimes they're future projects. Sometimes those guys won't get to those projects. So that pretty well sums it up. This club has been in existence since 1957, and we've met continuously without stop every Tuesday since then. Um, we have one member in the club that joined in 1958. He's still with us. And uh, he was probably be here tonight. He's got a 41 Studebaker that's pretty outstanding. And uh, he and his wife have participated and been involved with the club that long. So that's kind of fun to have that kind of legacy in the club, that kind of history. My name is Floyd Off. Uh, my wife Donna's in the car. Uh, I bought this car new in 1967. It's a 68 model. Uh, bought it when I got out of service. I was a Vietnam drafty, so owned the car ever since. Love driving it. It's been a good family car. My name's uh, Roger Thice, and this is my dog Sammy. Uh, this is my 2008 06 Corvette. It's got a 427 cubic inch motor. I've got it for my 60th birthday. Had it since 2008.
I'm Mark Zoller. This is a 1972 International Harvester Scout. It's the first uh, model year of the Scout II. It runs on propane. That's why I put blue flames on it, because a blue flame is good and orange flame is bad when you're burning natural gas. Uh, propane is 100 octane. It's 44 degrees below zero, and the pressure's at 200 PSI. Uh, I have a 345 cubic inch engine in it. And it's all stock except for the propane conversion. It's 1970s technology. And I have a big tank in the back. It's uh, 44 gallons. You fill it to 80 percent, so it allows for expansion. And I did all the woodwork. There's, uh, I bought a walnut steering wheel, and then I built walnut all over. So I have walnut door panels and armrests uh, across the windshield to protect the top. I have a back. Uh, speaker boxes, and then I covered the box with the uh, with the walnut box, so I have the, t the tank is covered up. I have a uh, marine grade stereo in it. It's got six speakers. There's two amplifiers, so I have about 100 watts going to each speaker. There's 600 watts worth of amplifier, and uh, burn. You know, just uh, it's MP and UBS and and uh, CD player and AM, FM, so it's marine. It's also got weather radio, just in case. I have a rag top for it. It's got all the side windows. It's got a back window and a back screen, if whatever one I want to use. And uh, this I've had since 1985. The uh, propane tank is uh, 44 gallons. It holds 36 when I'm empty. It fills it up to 80%. It gives it about 20% for leeway. Uh, it runs off the liquid, so it runs underneath the truck. It goes up into a vaporizer, and it has a switch for a solenoid to turn it on and off, and the vaporizer vaporizes it. I have this one set up because I'm going to put flamethrowers to the tailpipe here in about a week. So it'll shoot flames out the tailpipes, just push a button, and then I can turn it on and off so it's safe. And so something fun, you know, fun for the kids and, uh, and the grown-up boys. Uh, like I said earlier, it's 44 degrees below zero. It's 100 octane and it's under 200 PSI. So if you open up this valve, there it is. There's the propane. Now you should be able to smell rotten eggs. So that's what I call this truck, the rotten egg. <laughs> so I go out four wheeling. I got my my gold pans, little shovels. I I take it out four wheeling still. Take it up in the hills, have a great time with it. It's a lot of fun. Part of the problem with swap meets, you dig it off the shelf, you find it, you think about it, you clean it, you try to figure out what it's worth, you come, you visit with friends, you chit chat, you haul it home, home and then you wonder where to put it. <laughs> <laughs> I know I had a place for this. Sure. The only thing is, I might have got lucky, somebody might buy that. Nice. There you go. What are you asking for that? I told him 2800 Good. It's but he'll, it, he'll it, sticker it, a deal with it, you. It's a thousand less than I got in it, plus a trip to Denver. But I have no need for it. I have absolutely no use for it. So unload. Yeah. So Gromer comes over and he's talking. And I said, well, you got to go to Bismarck. And I said, Bob Harvey is the sheriff. Bob Harvey knows me quite well. I said, you know, truly, if there had been computers back then, I still wouldn't have a driver's license today. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, so he comes back and we get approved and he, and he looks at me. And he says, nobody seems to know anything about you. I said, well, that means the witness relocation program's working. <laughs> you should have seen Grover look at me. <laughs> I, I just I haven't been down in the junkyard since no, last no, year. No, that's your museum. Yeah. No, I got a museum up top. <laughs> and that's full of junk, too. It used to be a museum, not just full of stuff. Years ago, you'd go to a farmyard and instead of asking if I could go look in their junk pile for something. I'd ask if I could go look in their field museum. Make it sound just, it, and it is. It's a, if you go to them old farms and you go out to where they've been dumping things for I'll 50 you, years, it's a museum. That's right. Well, back it, in the there's 50s, a lot of life. they all had their iron pile. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got started in motors. I, I, I was just a kid, you know, haying. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was so little, I just pulled the rope back. You know, they yep. put the forks in. I, yep. my, that was my job. I'd hit it, and then I'd put it over my shoulder and pull the rope back and bought out there, you know. And the tractor's backing up on the other side of the barn. <laughs> and, and at lunch, the gals that have the picnic table with the big spread on them, all the big, big guys were talking about pork belly prices, you know, and <laughs> us kids weren't interested in that, so I always go to the iron pile. God, I saw one Maytag and two Briggs and & Stratton Kickstarter oh, wash machine. Motors. I got one right here. I should open that up. And, and I'll tell you, I just yeah. said, oh, man, if I had that, I wouldn't have to pedal anymore. You know? 
and I ended up digging them out. God, they're way in the pond. I dug them out, and one turned over, or two turned over, one was stuck. The farmer comes over and he says, oh, you kind of like them, aren't you? Oh, yeah. He said, I'll tell you what. He said, I said, how much for them? I said, he said, a buck a piece. He that said, was big money back then. Oh, well, yeah. He said, I'll make you a deal. If you can get one of these three running, I'll give them to you. If you can't get them running, you owe me a buck a piece if you still want them. Okay. Well, I'm so damn dumb. I'm only like 12 or maybe 10. I get on the hay wagon, drive five miles back to the farm next to my farm, walk across the field to my farm, get my bicycle, piece of twine in my wagon, pedal five miles back, put three cast iron motors in that wagon, now I can't pedal anymore. Now I'm pulling the wagon, pushing my bike five miles home. What a dumb guy. <laughs> How much for it? 225. And it's a Pepsi. Yeah. I love Pepsi. That's cool. Run him around the corner. I know, I'm gonna have to. I don't think he saw any of this. She isn't very old. Well, thank you. <laughs> 35, huh? Well, I thought that was a pretty neat comment. You know, that Dan went said it was yours. Yep, that was exactly. There we go. Well, I'll see you guys at the time. We're good. Yep. See you later.